James Asheton Bayard Jr. November 15, 1799 to June 13, 1880, was an American lawyer and politician from Delaware. He was a member of the Democratic Party and served as U.S. Senator from Delaware. Topic: <laughs> Early life and family. Bayard was born in Wilmington, Delaware, son of James A. Bayard and Nancy Bassett Bayard. His father was a member of the Federalist Party and served as U.S. Representative and Senator from Delaware. His mother was the daughter of Richard Bassett, signatory to the United States Constitution and Senator from Delaware. His older brother, Richard H. Bayard, was also a U.S. Senator from Delaware. <laughs> Professional and political career Bayard studied the law, and began his legal practice in the city of Wilmington. From 1836 until 1843 he served as United States Attorney for Delaware. In 1851 he was elected to the U.S. Senate. He was re-elected in 1857 and 1863, and served from March 4, 1851, to January 29, 1864, when he resigned. As U.S. Senator he was chairman of the Committee on Engrossed Bills in the 32nd Congress, a member of the Committee on Public Buildings in the 33rd Congress and 34th Congress, a member of the Committee on Judiciary in the 35th Congress and 36th Congress, and a member of the Committee on Public Buildings and Grounds in the 35th Congress. Bayard served on the boards of various railroads, including the Wilmington and Susquehanna Railroad, the Philadelphia, Wilmington and Baltimore Railroad for which service he is named on the 1839 Newkirk Viaduct Monument, and the Pennsylvania Railroad. In 1846, Bayard represented slave owners in a civil suit against Thomas Garrett, a Wilmington iron merchant who was also a station master on the Underground Railroad. The plaintiffs demanded damages from Garrett for helping around ten slaves escape to freedom. The suit was tried in the U.S. District Court in Newcastle, Delaware before Chief Justice of the Supreme Court Roger B. Taney sitting as a circuit judge. Taney later issued the notorious Dred Scott decision as Chief Justice. Bayard won a judgment that all but bankrupted Garrett, who declared on the spot that he would redouble his anti-slavery efforts. Friend, I haven't a dollar in the world, but if thee knows a fugitive who needs a breakfast, send him to me. Bayard was a conservative and adhered to his interpretation of tradition throughout the American Civil War. He believed the South should be allowed to secede peacefully, and privately hoped for the secession of Delaware and a state convention to address the issue. Citing property rights of owners, he opposed abolitionist measures. He also stated both his opposition to the Civil War and his opposition to any presidential or congressional acts used to suppress the independence of the Southern states. During the Civil War, the Senate required all senators to swear an oath of loyalty to the Union. Bayard refused, stating that such an oath would be unconstitutional, and after taking the oath and giving a long speech disputing its legality, resigned from the Senate. The death of his successor, George R. Riddle, on March 29, 1867, left the Senate seat vacant. Bayard interrupted his practice of law in Wilmington and accepted appointment to the vacant seat. He was subsequently elected to fill it, and served again from April 5, 1867, to March 4, 1869. During the impeachment trial of President Andrew Johnson, Bayard voted, not guilty. After declining to run again for re-election, he returned to private practice for several years until poor health incapacitated him. In 1872, he was among the nine politicians whose names were submitted by the House of Representatives to the Senate for investigation in the Credit Mobilier scandal. He wrote a letter disavowing any knowledge of the affair, and his name was generally dropped from the investigation. <laughs> Death and legacy Bayard died at Wilmington and is buried there in the Old Swedes Episcopal Church Cemetery. He was the father of U.S. Senator Thomas F. Bayard and grandfather of U.S. Senator Thomas F. Bayard, Jr. Almanac Senators were elected by the state legislature at this time, in this case the Delaware General Assembly, to a six-year term beginning March 4. Bayard was elected to a term beginning March 4, 1863, but resigned in 1864. 
George R. Riddle was appointed to serve the rest of the term, but died in 1867. Bayard was then appointed to serve the remainder of the term. <laughs> 